Ferrari seemed to be the favourite to win it all earlier in the season, with their F175 proving to be both fast and reliable. But these past three races have been anything but that, and what seemed like an insurmountable lead that they have over Red Bull in the constructors' standings has quickly dissipated, and now they find themselves trailing Red Bull by 36 points. So what has been going on at Ferrari as of late? And what do they have in store for Baku to fight back in the championship? Stick around to find out. As we all can remember, Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc was cruising to another race win in the Spanish GP when his car suddenly shut off, forcing him to retire the car and costing him and the team the win. A week after in Monaco, Mick Schumacher of Haas and Valtteri Bottas of Alfa Romeo both experienced the same MG UK failures that cost them track time and required their gearboxes to be replaced by the following session. Bottas also had a power unit failure in Barcelona, as well as three other Ferrari power unit supplied teams. Seeing a trend of Ferrari power units not being reliable is a worrying trend for Ferrari, both for business and for their chances to win the 2022 title. Ferrari team principal Mattia Bonotto would acknowledge these issues, saying reliability is always a concern. When something is happening, it's never great. It's worrying us. We're looking at what happened, and sometimes you've got straight explanations, and it can be caused by external accidents. It can be caused by exceptional circumstances, but other ones may be of worrying concern. So reliability has been a key factor so far in the championship because we failed in Spain, and I think Red Bull as well. They've got three DNFs. We've got one. Our customer team's got some as well, so it's a challenge. As with performance reliability, that is certainly a big challenge. And reliability when you've got concerns, it's never obvious to fix them in a short time. So yes, it is a concern, added Bonotto. It doesn't mean that we are too concerned. I hope Christian Horner is more than myself, but let's do our best job from now to the end of the season and hopefully everything will be smooth and clear. But it seems like that isn't the only thing in Ferrari's head right now, as the team would also throw away their chances to win at Monaco, giving the impression that the team is crumbling under pressure now since it's been so long since the team was hunted, rather than being the hunter. F1 legend and two-time world champion Mika Haikkonen believes that it was human factors that contributed to Ferrari's blunder at Monte Carlo. In his words, In the race, Ferrari hesitated at the key moment, calling Charles in on lap 18, then pitting him again on lap 21 and also leaving Carlos out longer than was necessary. Red Bull got the strategy right, jumping their cars from third and fourth up to first and third. I know Ferrari have said they are going to analyze the reasons why their strategy went so badly wrong, but I think the technical analysis will be less important than the human factors. What makes one team have the confidence to make the right call and another team hesitate and get it wrong? That's down to people and the confidence which they have in each other when under pressure. Mattia would come to the defense of his team and their errors, saying that he believes that their mistakes at Monte Carlo will only make the team as a whole better. In his words, I'm pretty sure that those situations will make us stronger. And we are pretty aware being competitive is a fact. Winning is another task. And it's another level of difficulty. And I think as a team, we are still progressing, learning, and maybe it will take some more time. Red Bull's head of driver development, Helmut Marko, also believes that the team and their star driver, Charles Leclerc, are now cracking. As we can remember, Charles Leclerc also had an easy P3 in the bag, which would have helped him and Ferrari stay in the lead both in the Constructors' and Drivers' Championship, all of which would be lost with Leclerc's pushing to catch Red Bull's Sergio Perez. Helmut Marco believes that the team from Maranello is being tested if they can keep cool under pressure, saying, You are under pressure. Leclerc has a hard time with that and makes mistakes, he said. This is racing. In Monaco, we force Ferrari to react. They reacted instinctively wrong. And we can't forget about Carlos Sainz, who just signed a two-year extension with the team that will have him driving for Ferrari at least until the 2024 season. And as we all know, a new contract puts the spotlight on a driver to see if he can live up to what he is being paid. And as of late, Carlos has been underwhelming to say the least. He is clearly a second or two slower than his teammate Charles Leclerc. Carlos would admit that he isn't driving at the level he expects himself to be and still believes that he is still adjusting to the new regulations. In his words, You can see from the cameras and everywhere that I'm not there yet with the car compared to last year, that I'm not driving naturally. The car is a bit too pointy for my liking, but that's it. That's the way it goes. You can either adapt yourself or bring your car a bit more to your liking. Anyway, these two things, they take time and they take knowledge and experience. It takes mistakes and trial and error. And this is what I'm in the process of doing now and what I'm going to try and correct as soon as possible. His boss, Mattia Bonotto, would tell the media that he isn't worried of Saint's performance as of late and believes that the Spaniard will pick it up sooner than later. In his words, I'm sure he will get there at some stage because that's the attitude of Carlos, studying the data, trying different driving styles, adapting himself. He will maybe take a bit of time, but he will get there. 
I don't think that there are issues. Certainly, he needs to adapt by seeing that he has done a couple of mistakes, which are important. But nevertheless, I think he is improving himself. He is going faster and faster. Sainz himself has been on record as well, saying that he is enjoying the new set of challenges the new generation of cars is bringing, saying, I'm enjoying it. It's a whole new experience. You need to drive a bit differently. It's a different scenario I'm getting used to. I'm racing against two or three guys who have been at the front before. For me, it's the first time. My first six or seven races having a competitive car, and I've learned a lot that I'm going to apply for the rest of the season. Plenty of races left, a long time to go. So everything's to play for. As soon as I do these adaptations and find my feeling with the car, there are good things to come for sure. And as of late, Carlos' performance has been on an upward trend with the Spaniard closing the gap between him and championship leader Max Verstappen to 42 points after the race at Monaco and is only 33 points behind his teammate Charles Leclerc. If Sainz can get back to the swing of things like he did last year, he will be a crucial factor whether the championship comes home to Maranello or not. Another key factor also that could decide this year's championship is the new budget cap that the FIA has set for the year. The budget cap was established to even the playing field and give smaller teams a fighting chance against teams like Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes, who have endless amounts of capital at their disposal. But Bonotto believes that what seemed to be a great idea to make the season more competitive may end up doing the opposite. In his words, I think the only thing we can do as F1, sense of responsibility to give a bit of breathe increase the budget cap for inflation, which is something, as I said, which we never foresee. And I think that will be the right thing to avoid even maybe discussions at the end of the year and the championship. Or maybe the team winning the championship was simply the one spending the most, and that would be wrong. Bonotto would also be asked if he believes whether or not the team would be able to stay within the budget cap. He would reply to this with, I think there will be no way for us simply to stay below. I'm pretty sure at some stage we will go over. In the regulations, there is a threshold, which is 5%, he explained. If you do not exceed 5% on top of what is the budget cap threshold, it will be considered a minor breach. And what is a minor breach? In case of force majeure? What will the stewards and the FIA decide on that in terms of penalties? No idea. But I don't think there is any way for us, and for many teams, simply to stay within. I think that, again, to avoid that, because it's important to have a cap somehow, I think the only way is to take a breath, take some more time, and try to do a better and proper job for the next year and the following one. While Ferrari may be visibly crumbling under pressure, the fact of the matter is that it is still a long season and their rival Red Bull also has some reliability issues to sort out as well. So it's looking like which team can keep calm during the intense battles and also have the car that can make it to the finish line without exceeding the budget cap by a massive amount will be the one raising the championship at the end of the season. But what do you think? Will Ferrari get their bearings and go back to their winning ways? Or will Red Bull pull away from them? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.